back with the evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you and yours had a good weekend, everyone. Uh, we are turning the corner weather-wise this week. We're finally getting out of the deep freeze, but oftentimes the transition between one weather pattern and another is a bumpy ride at this time of the year. We'll have a little bit of a bumpy ride coming up tonight into Tuesday morning. Real quickly, though, just want to do a quick review of where we stand in terms of snowfall for the uh, season so far. Everyone's behind average in our region. These are the actual amounts. Uh, as usual, there's a maxima along the spine of the Appalachians and in Lake Effect country in New York and Northeast Ohio and Northwest PA as well. In our television viewing area, the uh, big winner so far, the eastern part of Mercer County, where some places have registered over 20 inches or so worth of snow so far this year, almost down that 20 to 22 inch mark, almost down to the Ashtabula and Trumbull line as well. Overall, this map looks a lot like a kind of a typical map in terms of the the orientation of the heavier snow. Oftentimes we see in the hills out here, of course, a big maxima with snow and then downwind of Lake Erie. Uh, northwest flow oftentimes really crushes uh, Crawford County and eastern parts of Mercer County as well. And uh, yeah, we got above freezing today for the first time in nine days, 35 the high this afternoon after uh, nine straight days where we did not even get above 30. The, the high water mark, if you will, was last Thursday and Friday when it was 26, but a pretty cold stretch here over the last week or so. And for the month, we're running a little bit cooler than the average, but that number is going to change in these final eight days of the month. Don't see a lot of cooler than average uh, temperatures heading our way through the end of January and probably into February as well. We'll talk about the February forecast at the end of the video. But first, yeah, we've got some freezing rain heading our way tonight into tomorrow morning. There can be some sleet, perhaps some snowflakes mixed in as well. And, you know, we haven't had many of these mixed precipitation events so far this winter. So let's do a quick uh, kind of weather 101 review of different types of precipitation. We all know what rain is. We all know what snow is. Freezing rain and sleet, those are the kind of in-between winter types of precipitation. Freezing rain is precipitation that remains liquid all the way down to the ground. The problem is, in the last couple of hundred feet, few hundred feet uh, above the ground surface, and certainly the, the ground itself, that's where you find the, cool, the uh, colder than uh, freezing air, below 32 air. So those liquid raindrops <clears throat> freeze on contact with cold objects in the cold air that is uh, hugging the ground. Sleet occurs when you have a thicker layer of colder air below 32, but then above that you have still a uh, smallish or medium small, if you will, uh, layer of above 32 air. So raindrops have time to melt on their way down, but then they encounter that big deep layer of colder than freezing air and they want to refreeze. Well, melted snowflakes that turn into raindrops don't refreeze back into snowflakes. They refreeze into little ice pellets, and that's what sleet is, of course. And so if you have a thicker below freezing layer, you get more sleet. If you have a thicker above freezing layer, except right down near the ground, that's when you have freezing rain. And I think largely freezing rain is going to be an issue around here tonight into tomorrow morning. And so certainly on colder surfaces, you know, you think of bridges, overpasses, sidewalks, any paved surface that isn't treated, uh, there can be a glaze tomorrow morning. Now, is this a big ice storm? No, it's not. But it's definitely a morning that you're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to your surroundings than usual um, because of that threat. And because of that threat, almost the entire state of Ohio is under a winter weather advisory and a good chunk of uh, western and central Pennsylvania as well. And uh, the radar as of this recording at 712 is pretty quiet locally. A lot of this is not reaching the ground or it's up over the lake. No big deal there. Our precipitation will be pushing in from this direction as we head through the overnight into tomorrow morning as well. So this is going to be a much more problematic ice event for places like Detroit, Ann Arbor, maybe down to Toledo, certainly out towards South Bend, Fort Wayne, maybe up to Grand Rapids. But once you get into eastern Ohio and western PA, this is more of a nuisance than a you know real big deal. Um, I would put this in the minor category as far as impacts go. And, and in our local area, I think a lot of this is going to be around and north of 224. The farther south you are, closer to Route 30, closer to Lisbon, East Palestine, Hanoverton, Selineville, East Liverpool, closer you are to those locations, the fewer impacts there's likely to be. In fact, you go far enough to the south, you might even miss out on a lot of the precipitation overnight into tomorrow morning. It might precipitate quite a bit up here, but you know, you're just in a, enough of a dry slot down in our southern areas that you might not even see much in the way of rain overnight. Kind of a close call down there. So. The uh, models are not exactly spitting out huge amounts of ice accretion. Um, 
generally probably a couple hundredths, few hundredths of an inch, perhaps up to a tenth of an inch in our northern viewing area. But the more problematic ice accretion amounts are when you get up into these neighborhoods, certainly up to a couple of tenths, quarter of an inch. That's where you really start running into more problems with everything being a skating rink. And that's when tree limbs can start to sag. You can run into problems with power outages and travel becomes very, very difficult when you get those kind of accretion numbers. But we're gonna be more in this category. You know, a tenth or so is about the most we should see in our local area. If we, you know, kind of make an ice severity index, um, I would say we're kind of a zero to one in this uh, circumstance. When you have a lot of wind and ice, that leads to more power problems and hence the higher numbers on this index. I think, you know, the wind is gonna be less than 15 miles per hour and we're gonna be, you know, down around a tenth of an inch or so. So, you know, uh, at worst, a one on the zero to five scale, that's when you have some isolated or localized utility interruptions. But again, I'm not real concerned about that because, you know, I just don't think we're going to be able to squeeze out a whole lot more than about a tenth of an inch or so worth of accretion. This uh, precipitation will try to push in initially, not long after midnight, I think, but there's going to be a lot of dry air at the surface that eats away at the initial wave of precipitation. I think it has a better chance of reaching the ground as we go a couple hours past midnight, towards two, three o'clock in the morning. But again, look at this model depiction. You know, down here, hardly anything. Um, it's going to be more 224 in north. But, you know, by the time a lot of people are heading out the door tomorrow morning, about daybreak, seven or eight o'clock, uh, whether you see peach or purple on this, you know, it's all about the same. It's about 30, 31. Um, you are going to be rooting for sleet instead of freezing rain. Sleet tends to be not as impactful on surfaces. Um, but freezing rain, that's when you get that glaze and things can be a little bit slick. So again, just if you have to commute tomorrow morning, if you got to be out and about, uh, just use a little bit of caution. We'll get through this just fine. And by the afternoon, we're above freezing on our way to the upper 30s. Pardon me, some rain showers around. Boy, get used to this. Plenty of raindrops coming our way this week. You know, if it warms up at this time of the year, typically it comes with rain and this week will be no exception. A little bit of a break then Tuesday night before rain pushes back in on Wednesday. Pretty much a washout Wednesday afternoon and more raindrops in store for Wednesday night and into Thursday. We're just going to see impulse after impulse coming up from the south. And, you know, quite a bit of rain will be squeezed out before the week is through across eastern Ohio and western PA. And, yeah, take those vitamin D supplements this week. We're not going to see much in the way of sun all the way through the upcoming weekend. Um, plenty of rain, plenty of clouds, not much sun, but, hey, we're getting out of the deep freeze, and a lot of our snowpack uh, that we have across the area will indeed be melting. All right, we uh, talked last week about the longer range, how we talk some about the really longer range this week, including the February outlook put out by the Climate Prediction Center last week. This is their initial February outlook. You don't see any blue on the map. Um, this may come as a little bit of a surprise to you. If you remember from our winter forecast back in November, we, we talked about February being a pretty cold month compared to the average. And I do think that at least half of February is still likely to be that way. But it looks so mild early in February that that's going to skew the map a little bit. I think we've got a big blowtorch pattern coming at the very end of January in the first handful of days of February. Um, may not blowtorch all the way to the East Coast, but it's going to be very warm compared to the average in the Midwest, probably the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as well. Does that mean 80? No, but it means, you know, we could very well see some highs in the 50s with a fair amount of regularity to kick off February. I do think beyond the first week to 10 days of February, we start transitioning into more of a colder and more active pattern once again. And I think that'll take us home through the tail end of a meteorological winter. But yeah, the first handful of days of February, looking pretty darn warm. As far as the precipitation outlook in February, likely to be below average. I like what they have here on the map. Um, I don't think it'll be as stormy overall as this coming week uh, will be. And uh, so all things considered, you know, I think uh, meteorological winter, <clears throat> barring any big snowstorms towards the end of the season, meteorological winter, the core of winter, December, January, February is likely to stay below average in terms of snow, because I don't think February will be particularly snowy. Too warm early, and then later as it turns colder, maybe uh, we're not in the heart of the uh, storm track at that point. So that's the way things look initially uh, for our February outlook, but uh, we'll have an update on that February forecast coming up in about a week or so. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday night. I'll see you back here same time, same place on Tuesday.